Well, that's back together and it's moving as smoothly as, ever, as it's ever going to. I'd like to say it's a uh, miracle of modern engineering, but that's not quite true. But it does work, and that's the main thing. And it's free from all the contamination. And I can turn my attention to the uh, mechanism plate. Getting the diaphragm assembled back in here was exceedingly tedious. Um, no doubt they had a jig in the factory which helped them achieve it. I didn't and I struggled, but it is back together. So the mechanism plate. Let's have a look at this. Two blades, uh, similar design I've seen before. Basically this pin rises and the blades are pivoted here and here. This is very, very sticky with oil. So all this needs to be very carefully degreased. And check that the levers here all move freely. I think once they're flushed they'll probably be fine. The retard gear train runs smoothly. It has a lot of spring tension. Um, but I suspect that needs a good flush out. So I will flush all that with some naphtha. And uh, if I'm happy with the way everything's moving here, and I've cleaned this, I'll clean those blades, put them back in place, and then fit the case back over it. And the shutter will be back together, put the control gear on the top. Well, I did reassemble the diaphragm mechanism successfully. In fact, I reassembled it twice. The first time I assembled it, I had had the blades with their longer pins upwards towards us here in the picture and their shorter pins in the case. And uh, I videoed that process, or thought I had. Unfortunately, I'd never pressed the record button at the time, so it didn't go anywhere and all my explanations stood for nothing. That having been said, when I put the mechanism plate on here, I discovered that the shutter blades would open sometimes, but not others. They wouldn't open reliably. And what was happening was that the shutter blades were catching on the pins at these points. I had the blades in the wrong way round. So that was a bother and a nuisance, and I had to take the diaphragm mechanism apart again, and give everything a, another clean for good measure and reassemble it correctly. So that on the diaphragm blades the pins are in the same position at each end of the blade but the longer pins, and there's not much in it, need to go into the casting, into the, uh, cam the shutter housing and the shorter pins come up here into this uh, settings ring. Um, fiddly, terrible job to put this back together, but uh, no, it went in the end. And the secret of success was I tried various things. I tried building it onto the moving plate. Uh, the problem there is that the rivets are in the slots, so the blades tended to float about, and when I went to try and get the case on, it didn't go well. Assembling it into the case, I placed each blade individually and swung them back out of the way as far as I could to slide the other blades in where I needed them to tuck in underneath. And uh, that worked quite well. It was very stiff. The action was very stiff afterwards, very rough feeling. I had to dismantle it once more. It turns out that there was undue friction under this point. You need some friction, otherwise the settings are too easily knocked. There was just too much, and the edge of this was basically cutting into the aluminium frame there. And it was an effect that wasn't obvious previously, because of course the whole thing was smothered in oil. A little bit of judicious straightening out, and a wipe of molybdenum paste under the edges. And that moves nice and smoothly now, but it shouldn't be knocked out of place. 
So that was the story of the diaphragm and the mechanism plate I have cleaned, fitted the shutter blades as I said and this should all go together now with a minimum of fuss. At least that's the theory. Line up the three screw holes. There were three screws and one of them was longer than the other. And the long screw was not the one with the X mark next to it. It was the one over here with the little tick mark that I'd made. See if we can run that in. I must say I haven't made much effort to make sure that that is the appropriate place for that screw. We could certainly do that now. So here's the shutter from the front and basically this lever swings to open the blades to the fully open position and the action there is nice and smooth. Our retard gear train here is nice and smooth in its action. It's not the uh, gentle buzz that you get with a compour shutter but it certainly does the job. The flash sink over here is never going to go because there's a pin missing. The centre of this flash contact is actually missing. I don't think that will be a, a major issue for the owner. We'll leave that exactly as it is. And so there's some control levers to go on here for the shutter release. The little piece that blocks the action of the shutter release if the shutter hasn't been cocked which saves you wasting a frame of film. And we'll get these pieces cleaned and in place. There's a bit of um, staining on those shutter blades, but they are clean and there's nothing there to cause me any worries, I would think. But uh, I don't know how many other clever things I said on the video that you're never going to see. There's probably all sorts of clever things. Never mind. This is where we're up to. It all looks quite good from here. I better get this shutter release lever in place. I'll just run a touch of molybdenum and paste through the pivot point. It fits on here. The spring hooks around this post over here. How does it go against the case? It certainly works against the case, but I'm not 100% sure it would stay there. Yes, that's much more like it. This spring, this lever here is the B lever, and the spring for that is tucked in down at the bottom of the case here against the lens tube. I've got to fish that out and hook it behind the B lever. I think I've got to press the shutter release in here to get that B lever to drop down a bit. Right, I've got enough clearance under there to get that spring under.
Is that it? It was indeed. So our B lever is in position, our shutter release lever is in position, and I can put the main lever in position, this piece. So I'll run some molybdenum paste around the inside surface, around the outside surface. Two areas of concern here where it catches on the uh, shutter release and here where it acts against the speed train over here, the retard gear train. And I'm just going to put a touch of molybdenum paste on the retard gear train at the lever here where it's operated by the main lever and down here where the main lever pulls that across. If I cock that I should be able to get the lever in position. The spring for this lever hooks over that screw over there, I believe. sitting down in place. Ah. Something else I wanted to put some lube on that, uh, Rita, that main lever. This little diamond shaped piece here actually does the opening and the closing of the shutter blades. Sitting down in place, it only needs me to hook that spring over the post and the post that the spring sits over is the longer of the three screws that held the case to the uh, mechanism plate. Of course it's playing hard to get. Here we go, that's in place. That's the B lever, what's jammed me up there? Nothing I think. Right. So far so good, I'll put the speed cam, the speed settings cam ring in place. Which way up does this go? That way I believe. Is that it? Looks like it. I'm not seeing any action from the shutter there. It's working fine on the slower speeds. I didn't see any action on the higher speeds. Interesting. Something is not happening. On the slow speeds, this should be B, I think. No. This end is it. That's a slow speed. That was one second. This doesn't rotate all the way around to the B end of the sketch. I wonder if that rings on back to front. Let me find out. That might be it. That's better. That's B. 
that's probably one second and whatever the fastest speed is at this end of the shutter and I can see those blades opening and closing. Alright, that part looks to be quite good. Interestingly, there is nothing holding this trim ring on the front of the shutter except the central lens element. That's a bit of a departure from normal practice. Okay, so far so good. I'm happy with the state of that. I need to, oh, I need to put something back in the shutter. We have everything here except the little le lever that stops you depressing the shutter release while the shutter is uncocked. Which is this little piece here. I better go and find my better glasses, I can hardly see this. This fits over this post. Where does it fit? It must be swung in, so it must, the spring presumably fits over that side of that post. Let's have a look. Now I can't press the shutter release in now, but if the shutter was cocked, and I can't cock the shutter, so I must have this in wrong. need to rotate around further. There for example. Let's try that. Yep. Yeah that was it. Simply had it in the wrong place. So it needs to be right up against the case there. The spring is against this post. Now we've got to put this thing back on that I've already put on once the wrong way. And I think I decided it went that way, didn't I? Yes. Yes, that looks good. Okay. Good. So the shutter's complete. The shutter release cannot be depressed unless the shutter's actually cocked. So that's all that is designed. Here we have the uh, front plate, which has a groove in the back of it, which has to line up that, that uh, shouldered screw there. I don't know what that repetitive thumping noise is out there, somebody must be knocking in fence posts or something. That's better, that sits right there. I better clean the lenses now. Alright, well the central lens group, or well, central lens element really, because this is a triplet, I'm just wiping around the thread where it screws into the shutter and wiping that front face there too. I'm trying to keep off the glass if I can, because it'll only leave smeary marks, which then I've got to waste a lot of time trying to clean. I'll wipe out the thread here where the front group screws in to get rid of that nasty grease that's in there. Well, there wasn't really much at all, of course. I want that all clean because I'm going to be putting some fresh grease in there. And I'll probably be using something quite thick, not the stuff I would normally use because. Because the uh, front lens group is such a poor fit in there. There's a lot of filth in there. A bit tricky getting all that out.
I need all this to be um, clean of all filth and dirty old grease and so forth before I start cleaning the glass because otherwise it's just a futile game of spreading oily smudges from one place to another this is the face that goes towards the shutter blades that's looking pretty good I'll fit that in place in the shutter. All the machining in this shutter is pretty rough. tighten this thing up it was over tightened before which is quite common and it certainly doesn't need to be over tight because it's got no force on it to speak of that's fine now I'll clean this glass surface the one facing the front and then I can look at that glass more critically to see if I've managed to get it clean and that looks good to me I'm happy with that so the rear group the rear group or the rear element I should say To wipe that mount with some naphtha. I'm not trying to get onto the glass with this, I just want that mount clear and clean and free from any oil and grease. That appears to be okay. And now I clean the glass. So this is the inner glass, the one that faces the shutter. It's almost flat, so I'm judging the state of the cleanliness by reflections from the window behind beside me. And I'll put the shut put this lens in place now. That's very rattly in its threads. I'll just finger tighten that. That's all that's required. And I'll clean the rearmost surface the one facing the film which looks quite good well that brings us now to the uh, front group and this was the one that was loose and sloppy to start off with I've put some grease on here to uh, check to see if that improved the situation. It did. But this whole machine surface is just absolutely crap. It's incredibly rough. Just running over this with a very stiff paintbrush 
to get the dust and rubbish out of that thread. I don't know what to make of that. I suspect that this is anodized, and I suspect that when they anodized it after they'd machined it, that they overdid some chemical stage of the process and ended up etching away half their thread. That's about the only thing I can put it down to, really. It's a very fine thread, and it's really buggered up. I think think that I'm just trying to think I think that probably more generally if an aluminium component like this was going to be machined and anodized that the thread there would have been machined after it was anodized or it would have been protected in some fashion to stop it being anodized I suspect that's the case I suspect that they machined that then anodized it whole and that that process wasn't kind to the very fine aluminium threads. I'm just going to screw that in there lightly while I clean the front surface. Because once I've got the front surface clean, I can look in through that effective window and get a much clearer idea of how clean or otherwise all of those glass surfaces are. It does look pretty good. Now I want to find some thick grease that'll take up some of the slop here in the threads. Alright, I'm away to find something. I've got 